All right, welcome everyone to the February 2024 Microsoft Purview Customer Network webinar. We appreciate you being here. Please treat all of the content that we share uh, to, as uh, confidential and with respect to uh, each community member. Uh, please remember to treat each other with respect, integrity, and accountability while you're here. All uh, Microsoft product features and topics and roadmap items are public knowledge unless noted by the uh, presenter. Uh, the purpose of the Microsoft Purview Customer Network really began when our customers um, were asking to speak to other customers about their experiences uh, with the uh, Purview products. Uh, we encourage you and, and, and anyone else that you would like to, to join uh, your peers at uh, the link that you see at the bottom of the network slide here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any one of your customer network leads. Uh, Rachel, Ashley, myself, and Greg will be happy to assist you uh, with any questions uh, or uh, about the network or any topics uh, that we've covered or upcoming topics. Feel free to reach out to us uh, for any reason. Uh, membership information. Uh, again, this was this was really developed to be to be peer to peer connections between uh, organizations um, to give each other perspective and outside um, perspectives on on how uh, the um, the technology works within different organizations, uh, different experiences, um, and to give you a resource to. Uh, the ability to connect with uh, technical resources and the communities within Microsoft. Uh, we have ongoing engagements like this, um, like this monthly webinar series that we have. We also have an open forum, Teams chat and channels, uh, and we encourage open dialogue uh, within the customer and, and technical communities. Um, Simple rules of engagement, uh, behave while you're here. <laughs> we expect everyone to uh, act professionally. Uh, it's really, you know, treat each, each other with respect and integrity and, and accountability. Um, and we highly recommend joining the Customer Connect program. This is where <clears throat> you can have influence on our uh, products before they're, they are released for general uh, availability. Uh, so we highly recommend you uh, joining the Customer Connect program. Uh, the, the specific program that you're looking for for Purview is listed under data security. Uh, we highly recommend that you, that you join that. If you, um, if you wish to participate in any uh, private previews and um, uh, any updates that are, that are coming out uh, in, within the next few months or the next few years, um, this program really is, is for you. So highly recommend that. Uh, we'll post a link in the chat to that. So if you'd like to become a, a, a member of the Customer Connect program, again, highly recommended. Today's agenda, I'm excited to uh, introduce Sebastian, who will actually introduce himself and give a little bit about his background. But really, uh, he is a Microsoft senior consultant and, and the con creator of something called MPAR. And this really gives us the ability to create advanced rich reports within Purview. And so excited to have him with us today. Uh, Sebastian, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. <clears throat> okay, thanks for, for the introduction, uh, Eric. <laughs> Welcome everyone. My name is uh, Sebastian Samorano. I'm a senior consultant, uh, SME, for Microsoft uh, Purview, uh, most valuable ninja for uh, <clears throat> uh, Microsoft 365 uh, Defender and uh, Sentinel. And uh, recently I received a, a, another uh, award called the Rice Award <laughs> related to hey, my. Sebastian. Sorry to interrupt yes. you. If you are sharing your screen, it is black for me. Oh, there it goes. It's a still sharing. Uh, I'm yeah. just sharing. No, no, thanks for, for that. And uh, <clears throat> I have a, a, a big background. Um, in a couple of days, I will complete uh, 10 years on Microsoft, uh, working from the beginnings in all the stuff related to, to Purview. And the idea today is have a, a, an open discussion about this uh, Emperor solution, Microsoft Purview 
uh, advanced reach report. And I, I believe that they have a, a presentation from uh, here. Uh, I will try to, to explain very quick. Uh, no too many, many uh, presentation, but what's happened? Uh, I've been working uh, on the past. Maybe if you have uh, experience on that with, with the old uh, central reporting uh, for labels for the AP labels. But uh, unfortunately, that was uh, deprecated, and I was doing several uh, good report for the, some customers uh, from that that uh, old central reporting. But when the our product group decide to deprecate the old central reporting previous to to that, I was trying to see what can I do to maintain the the same kind of uh, report, and in that order of idea. I found uh, uh, a script that is public uh, from our product group to consume part of that data. But I start thinking uh, uh, about this. Uh, I was uh, testing. And finally, from that point, uh, start appearing uh, Empire. What's happened? Today, all the activities related to Microsoft Entra, uh, related to Microsoft 365, Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Purview are sent through this auditing pipeline to this height uh, Microsoft 365 audit storage. This uh, height storage is the source used by the Unified Audit Logs or Microsoft Purview Audit, Activity Explorer, or we can consume through the Office 365 Management uh, API. Those are the, 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 the options that we have uh, available today to consume the, the data. If you have some knowledge or some experience using the, <clears throat> the unified audit logs, take some time. Uh, no matter if you use the Microsoft Purview Audit or Activity Explorer, you have some limit to export the, 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 the data. Activity Explorer only showed the last 30 days. <clears throat> and uh, end user activities, but services running in the background or uh, admin activities are not shown on Activity Explorer. Uh, to use the Microsoft Purview Audit, the advantage you can request the, the data the past six months or the past year, depend the level of your licensing. But you need to know which operation are you looking for. If you're not aware about the, the activity, the, the operation, is very complicated to identify the specific. Maybe you are aware from some specific, but there is a lot of activities. When I say a, a lot, I've been building a list of activities that are collected here. And today I have a list for more than 680 different activities related to uh -huh. the common ones, SharePoint activities, Exchange, OneDrive teams, activities related to labels, retention labels, DLP, but we are talking about additionally to a stream, Power Apps, Power BI, Power Platform, a Project Planner. A now, a Copilot was added as well to the Office 365 Management API. We can collect all the activities that are happening through Co Copilot. And with that in mind, Finally, the the Empire collector that is final uh, is a group of uh, different script that permit to collect all that data. We are collecting the data from the Office 365 Management API. That is in general uh, 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 around 95% of the activities that are happening, and we have some additional uh, uh, script that help us to show the data in a better way. Something that we are forgetting normally is 95% maybe from the people of our organization are non-technical. We need, when we talk about security and compliance, we need to involve the entire organization. Today, we cannot leverage a security and compliance project from a specific area. 
from IT or circuit security. We need to involve the entire organization. But to involve the entire organization, we need to start thinking on process, procedures, roles, responsibilities, and permissions. But inclusive, with all of that, we need visibility. We need to show the right information to the right people in the right moment. And I cannot request to a C-level user to access to Activity Explorer, Content Explorer, or Sentinel to see some specific activities. I need business-friendly report. Report that permit me to build metrics, KPI, OKRs, and several other information and permit to go from top to bottom with the level of granular granularity that we are showing. In that order of idea, the rest of the script permit us, as an example, this one, the MPAR RMS data, show the information about access denied or access granted over protected document. Information that today is not available under Activity Explorer or Microsoft Pool View Audit. If someone external is accessing to your protected document, that information is not here, or uh, access denied from external do domains are not showing here. <laughs> then we have information that coming from the Microsoft Entra. In that case, we can use any attribute from users to show the data to filter the data, business unit, location, region, country, office location, or anything la, 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 like that. And the rest of a script uh, help us to complete all this information. The advantage today with the Empire setup is an, a, an installer for all this script. We can have Empire running in five minutes and start collecting all the data in Logs Analytics. We can use a separate workspace in Logs Analytics, or we can reuse the same workspace used by Sentinel. Sentinel is not a, a requirement to, to have Empire. With Empire, we can improve the reports that can be generated on, on Sentinel. But using a, a standalone workspace on Logs Analytics for Empire, we can create different report that can be published to a different audience. In that case, as I said recently, show the right information to the right people in the right moment. We can build report to C-level user and then go to, to down on the organization, showing more granular information to take some actions. I don't know if you have a, any question or, or comment until here. Let me see. Uh, the, the script is called uh, Azure AD Users, but uh, I, I am using the, the, the Microsoft Graph API. Someone is uh, asking on, on the chat re related to the Azure AD Power Tool. Is planned for deprecation, but uh, that is the the name that I put to, to to the script. But you can see here the APIs that I am using to collect the the data. That is the the, the big deal, <laughs> and I believe that the best thing is show what we can do with the, this information more than uh, show PPTs. I am. Uh, I know that PowerPoint is the best compiler uh, on, on the world. Uh, all the stuff uh, works on on PowerPoint, but the the best point I believe is show how this work. On my case, I have a, a VM that is uh, running the the script every 15 minutes. I have my Empire data collector. We have an uh, the setup script finally create an application inside of Microsoft Entra. We have an uh, application with all the uh, API permissions that we need to, to run the script uh, uh, an attendant. 
And with the same script, we will create an, a specific folder and we will put all the script that we need to, to run in, in that folder to collect the, the, the data. The principal, the, the, the main script, uh, normally is set to run every 15 minutes. That can be changed. Generate a timestamp file that is used to download only the delta of the information and uh, nothing more. That, that is the, the, <clears throat> the, the way that we are collecting only the, uh, only the new data and not collecting additional uh, data. If you are looking for MPAR, I did a big effort and today if you look in, in any search engine for Emperor, eh, all the first link will be related to the Microsoft Purview Advanced Reach Report. We have a GitHub page where all the code is published. I have a LinkedIn page that you can uh, follow where I am sharing all the news related to Emperor. And we have a YouTube channel where I am sharing all this video, inclusive this recorded session will be shared uh, on YouTube as well, uh, where I show how you can install, how you can consume the, the data, build report from scratch uh, and more. You are welcome to, to subscribe and follow our uh, <coughs> social networks. Here on the Empire uh, GitHub page, you will find all the information that I'm explaining. The script, all the information. Uh, I am working with a colleague, Greg. He's in uh, uh, Poland. And he, he is the black belt you will see on the version history and script. He was helping, helping me a lot with the, the script. And other colleague was helping me as well on Power BI to uh, start building uh, this report. You will find information, an installation guide, template that can be uh, ready to go to consume. I will show you now that kind of uh, <coughs> exercise. And let me show what's mean uh, finally on the, on the report. Let me jump to this another computer. And here, we can see uh, uh, an example. This template is available on, on the GitHub page. You can download and uh, use it uh, immediately. It's very simple. It's very simple. Let me show you that. You can, uh, after you install Emperor and uh, uh, after you set uh, all the configurations, you can come in here, select the, the template that you want to, to use. I will download this one the MPAR DLP general overview. And from Power BI, what we can do is file, import, Power BI template. Uh, this is the, the last one that I just uh, downloaded. And I will need my workspace ID. Give me a moment to take the, the workspace ID. Here, I need workspace ID. And now I will go back to Power BI. And here you can see that the template requests your workspace ID. You paste the workspace ID, and in the background, the same. Uh, template start creating the queries, the functions, and we will see in, in a while that all the reports will be starting here. For the moment, I will show the, the, the previous one. And when I talk about business friendly report, when I talk about business friendly report and have the right information in the right moment to the right people, something that we can do is using Power BI Online, Power BI Online workspaces, we can publish some specific report for some specific people. 
I can create a report for a specific business unit and show only the data for that specific business unit or for that specific region or for that specific country. I can filter the data and using Power BI Pro, we can easily uh, set the refresh to start refreshing the data uh, daily, at least with Power BI Pro permit to refresh uh, at least once uh, a day the, the data. Power BI Premium per permit to refresh more quickly, but in this case, I am refreshing once a, a, a day. But let me back to, to the report. We are almost, it's very common to see top workload, top DLP rules match, top sensitive information types, top users, and uh, the daily behavior. But when we start adding, as an example, business unit, all the stuff that we are seeing change a lot because now I am seeing that with the legal area, I am having a problem with OneDrive, credit card, num uh, credit card uh, numbers, and all of that was in one day with this user. That permitted me to have a complete new way to see the, the, the data. Another very important. If you are using the MAP scanner, you are aware that we don't have anything to see the detailed information from the MAP scanner, formerly AAP scanner. And it's not possible. So the details on Activity Explorer, the on-prem information is not shown in a Content Explorer. For that reason, have this level of detail can be very helpful. I can see the activities per each scanner. I can see the sensitive information types that was uh, detected. I can filter by the sensitive information type. I can see where the data was identified, the sensitive information type, the confidence level, how many of those matches I found, the discover, see if that document contain a label or not, and the scanner that detect that specific information. Inclusive, I have a, a, a video from a previous recorded session on, on YouTube. The, the template is, is uh, loading. We will back uh, later on, on, on that. Hey, Sebastian. Yes. Uh, quick questions. Um, so we have a, an internal Microsoft employee asking, um, and, and this is a great question, Matt. Th thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any internal resources that can assist customers with setting this up? Um, like, is this something that, you know, Fast Track or any, any other groups inside Microsoft can do for, uh, and, you know, unfortunately, our current, current customers? The answer is no. Okay. Unfortunately, the, the answer is no. Uh, I am helping from my side to several customers to uh, implement uh, this one in the, in the right way. Okay. I am uh, working internally to, to try to, to have some level of support for this solution because uh, each week we are having more uh, customers uh, using this uh, solution because unfortunately, uh, again, we don't have any business friendly report for Microsoft Purview. We have okay. several customers using the scanner and we cannot see the result from the scanner uh, 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 on Activity Explorer or Content Explorer. In, in that okay. order of idea, this kind of report are helping a, a, a lot. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I, so mm -hmm. back to Max, Matt's question, since since we don't have, you know, folks internally to, to help, I, what, I'll talk to you after today's meeting. Maybe we can set up like an internal support group where, you know, basically we can kind of learn from each other on on implementing this for or helping customers implement this. Um, you know, that, that's a great idea. So th thank you, Matt, for that question. Mm -hmm. We also have Michael, who's got a question. Um, he, he says he's been running this for a while as scheduled uh, tasks, and it seems like uh, they fail after, uh, after a few days. And he's wondering if they can be run from a Logic app or uh, Azure Automation. Yeah, uh, please, uh, if you have a problem, uh, you can open a, a, an issue on GitHub. I am uh, tracking all the, the issues and comment on the GitHub page, and I, I can try to assist to see what is happening. 
because okay. uh, right now I have customers that was using Empire for more than a year. Uh, I have uh, other partners that are start implementing for the different customers, the the Empire, uh, uh, inclusive one of the the, the customer, uh, uh, one of the partner on, on Canada. They install one big machine and they are running right now three instances of Empire from different customers because they are building the the, the report for for those uh, customers. Okay. And I, I have several other. Uh, <laughs> good uh, experience uh, and maybe it's something that we can uh, easily uh, fix. Related to uh, issue functions or automation, uh, I been re reviewing that. I have on the roadmap, but without it yet, because when we was reviewing to use Azure functions to move the, the, the script, we saw that the RMS the, the, the RMS API that is very important to the report about access denied or access granted is very old and is not supported by uh, Azure Functions. Okay, okay, uh, that makes sense. In, in, okay. in that case, we was reviewing uh, maybe run books uh, uh, for, for, for that. Okay. Now, what's happened? Well, let me uh, explain. Right now, I am finishing a couple of new script. I am uh, rewriting almost all the script to, to have the same attributes to a, a, a export to file only, mass export to CSV, manual connection. I am adding and I am rewriting all the script to, to have the same configuration, the same way to, to read all the, the, the script more easily. Uh, and having all of that, the, the, next the, the next step is we are having some changes we are having some changes on logs analytics. Uh, the, the tables and cha are changing, and in two more years, uh, you will not be available to send the data directly to logs analytics. You will need uh, uh, this T uh, that is a, a, a specific point, and all the data needs to be uh, managed previous to uh, inject to, to logs analytics. For, for that reason, I am working on, on that uh, as well to modify uh, all the process to inject the, the, the to analytics and uh, another connector that will uh, I hope will be available uh, in a couple of weeks may, maybe mid of uh, February that instead of sent uh, to Lux analytics that will send to even have because I have several customers that they are using other CM solution and they are asking me to send the same data to their uh, CM solution, uh, specifically the RMS data related to access denied or access granted, because several CM solutions have their own connectors and works fine for the Office 365 management API. Uh, but the other advantage to use even, even have is we can, uh, through the even have, we can start sending the data to different kind of data lakes or databases and build new, new stuff from, from there. Uh, that okay. is a, a, a connector I hope to, to release. And having all of that ready, uh, I will start uh, working on the, the next step that is uh, find a way to uh, build an Empire sol solution serverless. Something that we can run in some way, uh, issue functions, run books, or something like that uh, without uh, required uh, a server. That is in, okay. in general. Yeah. Well, th yeah, thank you for that background, Sebastian. Didn't mean to sidetrack you, mm -hmm. but yeah, thank you for answering that question. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to continue where you were, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah wh what's happened in, in general, uh, I am building all of this on, on, on my free time. <laughs> that, that is uh, the, 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 the big deal. It's not something, uh, my role as a consultant is working some specific projects and implement some technology. Uh, but uh, Emper, I've been working on on an Emper in the past two years, maybe more. Uh, and uh, again, well, every time that I have some uh, uh, free time or I, I'm in, uh, I'm in, in bench, I start uh, uh, progressing in, in this solution. Well, uh, uh, to to finish the the options related to MIP scanner, when we saw here the the MIP scanner. I have a, another B, a YouTube on, on video uh, where I was showing 
that uh, we can uh, add an advanced configuration to inclusive identify the primary element, the data that match with our criteria. And we can see here, I create uh, sensitive information types to detect US phone numbers. And here I can see the, the data that the scanner uh, detects and I can see the, the, the numbers and this information, this specific information is not sent by default. It, that is an advanced configuration that can be do it on, on the scanner. <laughs> but in general, with this kind of uh, data, I can see the total file discovered by the scanner, total file label, total file with uh, sensitive information types, the file that was labeled by the scanner or the, the, the update from, from the labels. We can see other kind of report. Uh, here you can see that uh, finally, using the template, I uh, add the workspace ID and all the data was updated. And I have my report working without a major uh, effort. The last script that I released uh, maybe one month ago, I am not releasing yet the, 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 this template. I am working in the best way to show the data, but I released a new component for MPAR that permit to collect all the information from Content Explorer. If you was working with Content Explorer, Content Explorer from a business perspective is not friendly. I need to, uh, here I can see the sensitive information types or the sensitivity label one by one, and I need to select each one to see the data on Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint Teams. But I don't have a global view for that information. Now with the new report that I am building, now the script is available to start collecting the data. I can see the total files active on my tenant and on SharePoint, and how many of them have sensitivity labels. I, I have a big tra trouble here on, on my SharePoint because only 600 over 8,000 have labels. We need to prepare for Copilot, and one of the, the big challenge for Copilot is know our target, how many files that we have on SharePoint or OneDrive, and how many of those files have uh, sensitivity labels, or how many of those files have sensitive information types. And here I'm showing as well the same information from the, the, the scanner. Or we can see the details. I am saying that I have 208 uh, files with sensitivity labels. And here I can see the sensitivity labels that are set in, in OneDrive. And if I want to see the details, I can see the details. I have the information about the path and the file name and, and more. Here, this one can be very uh, helpful. And uh, as I was mentioned, using Power BI Online workspaces, we can create different report. We can create different workspaces for different audience and we can publish those report to the different areas. In this case, I am showing the, the information about access denied or access granted over protected document. This information was not available on, uh, right now on Activity Explorer or uh, Content Explorer, but I can see all the detailed information about the file, the source for that file, who protect the file if that was having a label, and who is trying to, who is accessing to, to the data and the permissions granted for that access, and when occur that activity. And I can see the one month rent or three months, I can start reviewing what is happening with my data. And that that is the, the, the other advantage. On Activity Explorer, we can see only the last 30 days but with uh, using Lux Analytics, we can send the data and retain the data easily for two years, and that can be today inclusive for 12 years. If we want to, to see uh, and compare, that is another thing that is, is very helpful. With Activity Explorer and having one month, we cannot see the tendencies or we cannot compare queue 
to see what is uh, what was happening one year ago with my DLPs. I have a progress. I am evolving or I am involving related to the matches. Uh, my, my people is learning what happened with the sensitivity labels. Apply, remove, change. I have some progress or not. All that information I cannot. Uh, uh, I, I don't have that specific insight if I try to use uh, <clears throat> uh, Activity Explorer. That is in, in, in general the, the the big deal. And here you can see I, I am playing with a, a colleague uh, with a new report to see uh, the the total amount of files, how many of the files have uh, labels. I can see the, the the labels or the sensitive information types. I can have a, a, a complete overview related to my information. And this is very insightful to, to go forward with the data. Again, we need business friendly report. I need to uh, involve the entire organization. And for that, we need the right information in the right moment to the right people. I want to uh, to on, on my experience working on project implementing project. The big deal is the C level visibility. If I can create this report and this report can be updated once a day. In any moment, C level users can see as an example, the CFO say we need to move the data to cloud. I can show where the data is. If it's located locally yet on prem or is in OneDrive or SharePoint, and I can see how many of that information is labeled. And that permit me, I, I don't need to, to give to the CFO the specific detail for each file or if uh, if a uh, user, but with having that information, the CFO can say, okay, what is happening with our area? Why we are not progressing with the labels? Why in our metrics we are uh, <clears throat> down from 60%. And that again <laughs> is part of the process, procedures, role responsibilities and permissions that I was uh, saying at, at the beginning. One of the, the, the biggest thing that I was reviewing in different uh, customers implementing Purview project is we can implement DLP and someone view alerts but the entire organization is not aware about those alert. The same happened with sensitivity labels. We, it's very difficult when you try to leverage a DLP or sensitivity label or retention label project from the IT area or the security area if the uh, C-level users are not a sponsor. But if we are giving the right visibility that help us a lot to go forward. The tools that for me today, the security tools are only commodities. It's something very simple to implement, or at least for me, it's very simple, based on my experience to, to implement. But if the report are not falling to the right people, if the data is not showing to the right people, finally, the only thing that uh, we we listen is okay. The DLP is annoying me. I am boring to apply sensitivity labels. We need to show that data. We need to involve the entire organization on this project, and that finally can help a lot for security and compliance and the next steps uh, uh, compiled. Hey, um, I don't know Sebastian, if that makes sense. Really yes. quick, yeah, we had um, one two more questions come in. Um, if you don't mind taking a quick question break. Yeah, then let me try to, to see which one yeah. are, are the questions. So, yeah, one of the questions is when will Content Explorer templates be available? Um, and this uh, user... I, I hope soon. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I am working at to, to resolve something uh, basically, uh, but uh, the scripts are available. That means we can start collecting the, the data and inclusive the, the new script that I released. Uh, if you are not, if you don't want to use Logs Analytics uh, yet, and if you want, don't want to, to use Empire yet, uh, that script permit to export all to CSV. Have a, 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 an option 
that permit to export all the data uh, easily to, to CSV uh, without have all the, the, the rest of configuration, uh, at least to, to have the, the, the information. But uh, I am working on, on the report I was showing here. Uh, I am looking for the best way to show the data. That is the, 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 the big deal uh, because I can share any uh, Power BI template uh, but uh, if we are not showing the, the, the right information, uh, that cannot be the, the, the best way. For, for that reason, I, I am working on, on that, and I hope that during February, uh, release uh, at least one initial template. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, if you're interested on uh, <clears throat> perform some specific uh, uh, customization, for uh, each report, uh, you can always ask for a Power BI resource from our site, uh, and uh, someone from Microsoft can help. Because finally, we're collecting the, the the data, but we are using only Microsoft products in, in this case, and someone can easily uh, start uh, building uh, some new report. Inclusive, I have customers that they was taking this one, uh, they they was they the taking. They need to template and they start building their, their own report. Uh, I have the videos on YouTube explaining how to create a Power BI template from scratch. You can take that information uh, and try by yourself. Or uh, again, if you're interested, we can if, uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe we, we can create a, 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 an internal group to help to build this kind of report on, on Power BI. And you say that we have another question. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, the question is with purview unified portal governance and security plus risk and compliance underway. Do you foresee all of these reports to be available natively as part of the data state insights? If not, what do we need to do to make that happen? Yeah, coming a lot of changes on the purview unified portal. But uh, again, at least all the, the reports that are showing there normally are more technical, uh, more than the, uh, uh, as I say previously, business friendly, and are focused on uh, technical people. Uh, I'm still working. I am testing. Uh, I believe that we will we will have the, the capability to do several uh, stuff. Uh, this is life. I am uh, building several things uh, at the moment that uh, appear and, and make sense to show, as an example, the Content Explorer, the, the export uh, Content Explorer the data it was released uh, two or three months ago, and I built uh, a solution to, to use that capability and collect that, that data. Uh, yeah. When we uh, uh, arrive to, to that point, I will see how I can leverage the, the rest of information and start showing more, more, more data. Uh, but uh, it, it's open. It, it's something that uh, I am uh, growing with the, the, the solution uh, every time. Every day uh, I am seeing if we have some new stuff and how we can show uh, in the best way the, the, the data. Great, thank you so much. I don't much. know if that is if uh, that answer in some way that question. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, all right, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, no, that um, is the, the yeah. idea here for for me is try to to have a, an a, an open discussion about mm -hmm. what we can do, what we can show. Uh, as I mentioned previously, on the same uh, GitHub page, you can go to the, the the GitHub page and in the support information folder, uh, you can find this Excel file that I am trying to open and, and, and show on the, on the screen that uh, contain a, a list of operation that I've been uh, building with uh, customers that are using the, the solution on, on production. And I was getting the, the data. And you can see here what's happened. The Office 365 management API, and, and let me, and I will back here to, to this point. Let me see the Office uh, 365 Management API contain more than 40 different schemas. In those schemas, we can find, as I mentioned, Copilot was added, 
SharePoint OneDrive Teams, but we have Project, Planner, Forms, Viva, Dynamics, all the purview stuff, Yammer Schema, but now it's uh, Viva, uh, Defender. <laughs> you can see here, it's several things are collected. All these more than 40 schemas are grouped in five content blobs. Here are mentioned the, the five content blobs that, that we have to, today. From that perspective, from that point, is the, the tables that I am showing here in, in this Excel file, is the operations that are appearing on each content blob. And you can see here from Microsoft Entra, we have all the information that are happening, no matter if that is made by uh, end user, admin users, or services running in the background. Here you can see services running the, in the background. Compliance manager, implementation status change, or uh, something that no one is uh, uh, at least concerned related to, to the data that we can show. But uh, as an example, here is a long list. Uh, we have all the activities from a stream. If for some reason someone share a video and that uh, video finally start getting uh, several uh, <clears throat> views, we can create a dashboard to see what is happening. The impact that we can have with the stream or the impact that we have uh, with uh, Viva the activities that are happening on SharePoint, on Exchange, on DLP. I have other the detailed reports that I'm working to, to release, uh, but uh, as I was saying, I am releasing some general template that can be used, but if you want to create your own, check the videos, you can contact us. Uh, we, uh, we have several Ex expert colleagues on Power BI that I know that they can create a very more powerful uh, report uh, to give more uh, insight with the, the, the data. At least this is the, the beginning, is the initial step to start having uh, this kind of information in our site and permit to have that, that capability to involve the entire organization about security and compliance. I don't know if we have more questions or uh, additional comments. Uh, yeah, Sebastian, to, to so, yes. so there is a, yeah, one more question that came in. Um, uh, Khalid asks, can we find somewhere in the documentation uh, print screen ex examples of all your Power BI templates? Uh, yeah, they are in the same uh, MPAR. Uh, I was sharing, uh, let me, uh, here in uh, DLP, re here I was uh, sharing some uh, DLP report samples, some oh, of them very simple, uh, uh, another uh, a little more complex, and in the same uh, main page, if you go bottom, uh, you can see a other kind of report uh, uh, as well. I need to up to date because I've been working in uh, another report that I believe uh, have a, a, a better look, uh, a better look and feel. But uh, in general, uh, the other thing that normally I am sharing is on uh, LinkedIn. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you will see all the news normally on the LinkedIn page. I am sharing new template, new report that I am uh, I am building and uh, all the new script that I'm releasing uh, as an example uh, I release a, a, another script that maybe is not uh, generated too many impact but for some customers was generating some uh, details because something that is pending that we don't have is an overview about on purview the roles assigned this is a, a, a common question. If you are aware about the Purview portal, you can know that uh, we have some specific permissions for the Purview portal. But if you want to see 
who have which permission. You need to go one by one, reviewing all the permissions here and opening each one to have an, a, an idea. In that order of idea, start doing this exercise to identify who have which kind of role is uh, very, uh, take a lot of time and it doesn't make sense. Start opening one by one to see the, 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 the users. I, I release, I published that one on, on LinkedIn and uh, you can see here easily who have audit manager, who have content explorer, content viewer, and easily we can control who have access and maintain this information up to date. This is excellent. I, I've had so many, you know, when you were working through so many of your, uh, you know, report examples, you know, I, I thought back to a lot of the customer conversations I've had recently uh, where, you know, customers are clamoring for, you know, reports like what you've shown uh, so far or, you know, very close to what you have and can be, you know, easily modified to uh, to show what they want. Um, so really, really appreciate your time today, Sebastian. This was amazing. Uh, any other questions, um, you know, either put them in the chat or feel free to come off mute and ask uh, Sebastian. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, someone did uh, mention in the uh, in the chat that uh, Sebastian deserves a, a big bonus from Microsoft. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, but uh, no, this has been really great, uh, Sebastian. I, we appreciate your time. Um, hopefully, we'll have a follow up session soon. Um, I, kn I know a lot of uh, additional questions usually come in after uh, people view the recordings and, and that sort of thing. So, I'll be sure to follow up with you and and get any answered um in in our team's uh channel so again really appreciate your time um uh no thank one you more. for you uh, and the team for give me the this space to to show what i'm doing uh this uh, solution that can be very helpful uh i really appreciate the the, the time uh, to share the, this experience absolutely i've posted all your links in in the chat today i'll also post those in the team's channel uh so I linked your uh, LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn MPAR group, uh, your YouTube uh, videos, and, uh, and uh, how to get to uh, MPAR, your aka.ms link, uh, so uh, everyone can, can get there. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next month. Next month um, will be um, on March 7th, and we'll uh, post the topic soon online. So appreciate your time today, Sebastian. Thank you for everyone for joining. Uh, have a great month. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Have a great day and a good week.